Whosoever believes in him, those who live sincerely will not perish. They will have everlasting what? They will have everlasting life. We know what has been promised, don't we? Jesus promised that God's reward is for the sincere believer to have a home. Not a temporary home, but an everlasting home. A now, as you have heard me say in recent weeks, you and I, we should live by honoring the Lord. And in honoring the Lord, we should be living sincerely. We should be loving the Lord by loving our neighbors, as we love ourselves. Yes, I said that again at the start of my sermon for this week. God, he has promised that he will reward those who faithfully live according to his instructions of love. So I ask all of you today, the question that I asked at the beginning of this month, are you living sincerely? Are you living honoring the Lord day by day? Do you believe God's reward of living sincerely? Do you believe that it is worth living for? My hope is that all of you will answer yes to that question, not verbally, but in your heart today. Now, some of us, we may not know what God's reward is for living sincerely. So let's first start off there today. Let's start off by answering the question today. What is God's reward of living sincerely? What is his reward of sincere faith? Now, in general, the Lord, he rewards all people, doesn't he? God, he rewards all people, whether they are of faith or not of faith in him. How does he do this? Well, look outside. The sun is shining, isn't it? If it happened to be raining outside, well, hey, the Lord is causing his rain to fall down on us. The Lord, he provides life, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Not only does God provide life, the Lord, he sustains life as well. So the Lord, he rewards us with life. We are here today. That is a reward. And I always say this, we should not take the reward of life for granted, we should cherish the fact that we are here in the world today. Now, for those of us that are of sincere faith, we are greatly rewarded by the Lord. We are greatly rewarded by the Lord through our being in fellowship with him. By being in fellowship with the Lord, God, he rewards us by tending to our souls. The Lord, he tends to our every need, not just physically while we are in this world. The Lord, he tends to all of our spiritual needs. I hope you're following along with me. You see, in this reward, God, he uplifts us spiritually. God, he encourages us spiritually. The Lord, he motivates us spiritually. And in doing this, we are able to persevere. In doing this, we are able to overcome. And so we find here that the Lord today in blessing us, he rewards us with the blessing of salvation. God's reward, it is salvation. As James said in his letter, God, he rewards us with gifts that are unique, gifts that are perfect for all of his children. And I tell you today that the reward of salvation, it is the greatest. It is the most perfect reward that the Lord has for all of those who sincerely walk in faith, who live sincerely according to his every word. Now, here in my key verse for today there in the 29th chapter of Isaiah, we see God's reward of sincere faith. We see it shared through the prophet Isaiah. The prophet spoke and said 
other day where the deaf will hear the words of the book spoke of the day where again he said that the deaf will hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind will see out of obscurity and darkness. We are also told there in my key verse for today that the joy of the humble will increase and the poor will rejoice in the Lord. Now, to be clear, while Jesus certainly did restore the hearing of those who were deaf, and while Jesus certainly restored the sight physically of those who were blind, I want you to understand today that the reward that is being spoken of here is a spiritual reward. It is a reward of the Holy Spirit that is being still given out, that is still being rewarded in the world today to all of those who are of sincere faith in the only begotten Son of God. You see, to those that open themselves spiritually, spiritually to the Lord, we begin to see spiritually, don't we? You see, to those that open themselves spiritually to the Lord, they begin to listen, and they, we, begin to comprehend his every word, don't we? See, all of us who were once spiritually blind to the goodness of God, we are able to recognize that God is good, don't we? You see, we begin to, to see, we begin to recognize, we begin to understand spiritually through the reward of spiritual discernment that has again been shared, that has again been rewarded to us by the Lord our God. Now, for some of us, this gift from God, the gift of spiritual discernment, it is absolutely wonderful, isn't it? We rejoice in being able to see clearly spiritually. However, there are many in the world today who are dismissive of God's reward of spiritual discernment. And why is that? Why are there those who would dismiss God's reward of spiritual discernment? My answer to that question is impatience. You see, impatience it is, I believe, the downfall of mankind. Impatience. People, we, we, we struggle with waiting just one second, don't we? I remember when I was a child and mom and dad, when me and my brother would be going on about something that we wanted, when we wanted to leave somewhere, when we wanted to get back home, for example, and mom and dad would say, just wait a second. You know, we'd be just so impatient. All of us had that moment then when we was little. Impatience, the lack of patience, it is our downfall. And we find that scripture tells the believer over and over and over again to wait. But again, many people are of the belief that God moves too slow. Many people are of the belief that because the Lord moves too slow, because they can't wait just for a second on God, they feel that he isn't reliable. They believe that they must go elsewhere. They believe that their faith in him will not and is not rewarded because they don't have patience just to wait one second. See, again, many people they can't wait just for one second, nonetheless, to wait for the Lord, who we again believe moves too slow. As we know, the true faith calls for one to be patient with the Lord. Patience, we must remember, is one of the fruits of the Spirit that should be in the hearts, it should dwell in the hearts of all of those that are of sincere faith, all those that genuinely believe in God. 
to the Galatians, Paul said that those who wait on the Lord shall of the Spirit reap God's reward. Patience. You see, patience, faith, it, it leads to the great reward of God. Through the prophet Isaiah, again, the Lord said that those who wait on the Lord shall be rewarded with renewed strength. They shall mount up with wings. Is what the Lord said through the prophet Isaiah. You see, the renewing of our spiritual strength, it leads to the blessing again of being able to persevere. The renewing of our spiritual strength, it again leads to the blessing of being able to overcome. And again, the blessing, God's reward of strength, being able to overcome, it again is that reward of salvation. We should not take God's reward of salvation for granted today. Yet again, God's reward of salvation in the world today, it is sadly dismissed by so many people. So many people are turning down. So many people are refusing God's reward of salvation. We seen it in our Sunday school lesson a few weeks ago where we were talking about the invite, the invitation for the Lord about coming to his supper. We've seen it in a sermon recently as well. So many people are looking at the Lord and saying, no way. I don't want you. I don't want your reward. Some that are dismissive of God's reward actually profess to believe in the Lord. But again, they are dismissing the Lord. Why are they dismissing the Lord today? They dismiss the Lord today because they are ungrateful. One of the best examples that I have ever come up with is the baked cake example. There are many people who go to the Lord, and y'all have heard me share this with you before, that they pray to God for something. For example, a baked cake. They'll say, Lord, I want a cake. And they will be so ungrateful that God, instead of giving them a already baked cake, will give them the ingredients to bake a cake. Y'all laugh about it, but it's true. We pray for something and we get upset when God gives us the ingredients to make it. We get so upset because we don't have patience. We just want God to boom, it's there. You see, if it was just like that, oh man, everybody in the world, everybody in the world today will turn to the Lord. We say, God, I need a car. I want a car. God gives us the ability to go out and work for that car and we get upset with the Lord. Not grateful that God has given us the ability to even work for it. We are again so ungrateful today of all that God has done for us. God has given us such a great reward and many of us, we dismiss it when all it requires is us living sincerely, being obedient to his word. And his word is again to love those that are around us. That's all that God has asked of us. That doesn't sound like it's too much to me. Yes, I know the world that we live in today. I know how bitter and how cold this world is today. But again, like I said last week, we cannot be bitter in our hearts. We cannot be apathetic in our hearts. All that God has asked of us is to be warm in our hearts. All he's asked of us is to love in our hearts. God's reward of our faith should never be frowned at. God's reward of our faith should never be dismissed. His reward of our faith, it should be celebrated. You see, when one is dismissive of God's reward of faith, 
they can and they do become blind to his goodness. In our, in our response to reading for today, we see where this was the case for Israel. In the 10th verse there in the 29th chapter of Isaiah, we see that because of their dismissiveness of God, the Lord, he poured out a spirit, we're told, of deep sleep on Israel. And in their deep sleep, Israel, they would not understand the Lord's instructions. Those who had the ability to read, the book was sealed for them. And those who are literate, hey, they just couldn't read anyway. The Lord said to Israel that the wisdom of their wise men, he said that it would perish. And the understanding of their prudent men, he said at that time that it would be hidden. And those things did happen. What the Lord did to Israel at that time, it reminds me of what Paul wrote in his letter to the church in Rome. In his letter to the church in Rome, Paul wrote that the Lord rewards those who dismiss him by giving them over to a debased mind, that is, a reprobate mind. And the reward of a reprobate mind, it leads to a reward of eternal condemnation. It leads to a reward of eternal damnation. And as I said in our Sunday school lesson for today, nobody should want that reward from the Lord. Nobody should want to be cast away from God's presence for all of eternity. What we should desire today is that reward of salvation that leads us to be with him for all of eternity, for everlasting life. That is what we should desire. If we do desire it, then we will come to realize today that it is worth us living in sincere faith. Do you desire to live in sincere faith today? Do you believe God's reward of salvation? Do you believe that it is worth living for today? You see, personally, I desire to receive God's reward of salvation which again we see here in our key verse for today. Again, salvation that is deliverance. Again, salvation that is overcoming spiritually. Again, salvation, it is victory. It is victory over sin. It is victory over the world. It is victory unto everlasting life. Do you desire that victory today? As Jesus promised, whosoever believes in him, those who live sincerely will not perish. They will have everlasting what? Life. They will have everlasting life. We know what has been promised, don't we? And Jesus promised that God's reward is for the sincere believer to have a home. Not a temporary home, but an everlasting home. A home that will be with the Lord our God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus, he promised the sincere believer that we will have a home mm -hmm. in one of the many mansions that makes up the Father's house. I don't know about you, but I want a mansion in the Father's house. I don't care about a mansion in this world. I want a mansion in my father's house. Yes. But do you believe having a mansion in the father's house is worth living for today? Yes. I hope you do. Personally, I would say that having a mansion in the father's house, it is certainly worth living for. And I do my very best to live for my key. Yet those that refuse to live according to God's word, they think otherwise. They much rather have a mansion in this world, well, not a mansion in the Father's house. Well, they, they often ask, why live for something that ain't real? They say that if they could see it, if they could see their mansion, if they could see the Father's house, they say that if they could see it with their own eyes, if they knew it existed, if they had proof of its existence, then they would live for it. 
They would say that it is worth living for. They would say that they would actually believe in it. What kind of faith is that? In the same mindset, those that dismiss God's reward of salvation, they will look at this world and they will believe that they can find heaven in this world. I have mentioned this thought in the past, and it's still a thought that I just can't wrap my mind around. And the reason why I can't wrap my mind around the idea of finding heaven in this world is because I look at the world. I look at the world for what it is. Yes, this world, it is physically beautiful. But quite frankly, we mankind, we pollute, we make a mess of this world. And I ain't talking about just the trash that gets thrown all around. I ain't talking about the trash that we have circling around the earth today with all the satellites. I'm talking about how we spiritually pollute. I'm talking about how we spiritually corrupt this world with our sinful mess. This world, it ain't worth living for. But so many people have been deceived into believing that this world, it is worth living for and I just don't understand it. To those that think this way, I want you to understand that heaven, it can't be found in this world. I want you to also understand that if again, you need proof of heaven, that Jesus, he is the proof of heaven. See, Jesus is eyewitness report of the heavenly kingdom. It is all the proof that you will ever need. But again, Many people don't believe in his word. If Jesus's word isn't enough for you, then maybe you will believe the word of one who actually went to heaven and saw it for himself. I want to share with you today the beautiful picture of heaven through the eyes of the apostle John. John went there. John skipped ahead, saw what it will be like, wrote about it and shared it with all of us. You say you want proof. Let me give you proof today of God's reward. I want to share this picture with you today so that you can turn your life around if you haven't turned it around already so that you can live sincerely knowing that heaven, it is worth living for. So in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation, we will see the beautiful picture of God's reward of salvation. Now, as a spectator of God's reward of salvation, we'll see there in the 21st chapter of the book of the revelation of Christ. And in the first verse, we'll see that John said that he saw a new heaven and he saw a new earth. He said he saw the first heaven, the first earth, he said he saw it pass away. Now, I want you to understand that John in the spirit that he witnessed an end to this world. John, he witnessed the end of this present age, this, this physical age. And he saw the coming of the new. This future that just stood in witness of, it is confirmation of what the Lord again said through the prophet Isaiah, where the Lord said, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. The Lord said, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. This world, as you have heard me say before, I repeat again to you today, this world, it is temporary. This world, it is not here to stay. The riches of this world, it, they are temporary. They are not here to stay. They are going to pass away. The new that is to come is eternal. It is here to stay. You see, God's creation as we know it today, it is going to change forever not according to my word, not according to John's word, but according to God's divine and holy will. Now, what somebody may ask, well, why does the Lord, why does he want to do away with this world? 
Why does he want to do away with this creation? The answer to that question is simple. It is because of sin. Our sin. Sin is the answer. You see, sin, it fills God's creation today. And like I said, it pollutes, it corrupts God's creation. It tarnishes it. We must remember what I preached earlier this year, right at the start of this year. We must remember that when God created this universe, all that is known, all that is unknown, he looked at it and he saw that it was perfect, but something happened within this creation. Mankind fell in the garden due to the deceptions of Satan. Mankind sinned. And as I preached earlier this year, when God created all things, he desired to dwell with mankind, but the Lord will not dwell with us today because of sin. God, he still has a desire to dwell with you today. He wants to dwell with you, but in order to dwell with you, you must become holy and righteous. You must be like him. This creation, it must be like him, but it can't be like him. So the Lord is throwing this creation away. And as he said in the 14th chapter of Judge's gospel, he is creating something new for us. The new that he is creating for us will be without sin. And the new that he is creating for us, it will be without those who are sinners today. He is not going to let them in as we saw in our Sunday school lesson for today. Now within the new creation that the Lord is preparing for us, we will see there in the second verse, just said that he saw the holy city. He said that he saw a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. You know, some of us will look at that verse and we'll go, what, what is this? What is this new Jerusalem that is being spoken of? Well, the Jerusalem of today, as lovely as it may seem to some, it will pale in comparison to the new Jerusalem that is to come. The new Jerusalem will have the beauty of a bride adorned for her husband on her wedding day. So on her wedding day, those brides, they look beautiful, don't they? On her wedding day, those brides, they look perfect, don't they? No blemishes, no flaws. Look at that. The new Jerusalem will have the beauty of a bride adorned for her husband on her wedding day. In other words, the new Jerusalem will be absolutely stunning. There is no city in the world today that will compare to the new Jerusalem's beauty. The new Jerusalem scripture shows us will be the capital of heaven. We'll see there in the ninth verse there in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation that John in witnessing these things had an angel come to him and the angel desired to show John the bride of the lamb. The lamb we know is Jesus Christ. The bride, as we have seen before, we know that the bride is the church. And again, I want you to understand when I say the church, I'm not talking about the local church. I'm talking about all of those who live in this world sincerely according to the words of God. All of those who are true to the faith. The angel desired to show John the believers. And so with that thought in mind, we see that the angel desired to show John us, the believers. This is a verse where John sees us in eternity. This is a verse where, where John sees us in heaven. I've said it before. You may not remember it, but I want you to understand that we are already there. Scripture shows us that we are already in heaven. The Jew believer, you and me, we've already been seen in heaven. 
It is written and it will be done. The angel, John said there in the 10th verse, carried him in the spirit to a great and high mountain so that he could look over into New Jerusalem. What was he looking over into New Jerusalem for? He was doing that because the bride of the lamb was in New Jerusalem. The church was in New Jerusalem. You, the genuine believer, you were there in New Jerusalem. The church is inside of its heavenly home. New Jerusalem is our dwelling place. You ask for proof today, I'm showing you proof that it is real, that it has been seen, that we, the believers, that we have been seen. We are there in heaven. Now, as John continued to look at New Jerusalem, we'll see there in the 11th verse that John, he just continued to marvel at the beauty of God's reward. God's reward, I want you to understand today, God's reward, it don't look shabby. God's reward looks absolutely beautiful. Of the beauty of New Jerusalem, John wrote that it had the glory of God. John said that it's light was like a most precious stone. He described the light like that of a jasper stone, clear as crystal. It was beautiful. It was perfect. No flaws, no blemishes. See, this city that our husband, that Christ is preparing for us, it is absolutely perfect. It has no flaws, it has no blemishes. Christ, he is making it that way today for his bride, for us, so that we will be happy. What is that old saying? Happy wife, happy life. Christ is going to make us happy for eternal life. You see, I don't know about you, but when I read this scripture, it fills me with so much happiness. When I read this scripture, when I see myself in heaven, it fills me with so much joy. It excites me. It keeps me pushing forward because I want to fulfill that picture. John, he tells us even more about our heavenly home as we continue on there. He tells us more about our heavenly home and its beauty when he tells us that there was no sun and no moon there in the 23rd verse. He said there will be no need for the sun or the moon in this new creation. And the reason why that is is because, again, he says there, God will illuminate that new creation as the Lamb will be the light of the newness. We will literally be dwelling in the light of God in the newness. We will literally be dwelling in God's glory in the newness. See, again, I don't know how you all look at this picture, but what a picture this is to me. What a beautiful picture this is of God's war. And then people again question, they, they question it. They say it's not real, but John has seen it. Eyewitness report where John has seen the beauty of God's reward. Now in all of this beauty that Jesus shows us through John, John tells us about how joyful, about how joyful it will be in our heavenly home. John, he noted there in the 22nd verse that there was no temple. He didn't see a temple in heaven. And the reason why he didn't see a temple in heaven was because he said that God Almighty and the Lamb was the temple. He tells us that he then heard a loud voice from heaven in the fourth verse that proclaimed that there will be no tears, there will be no more death, there will be no sorrows or pain, there will be no more trials, there will be no tribulations. 
Listen to these things. John tells us that in our heavenly home, there will be no sufferings. In heaven, there will be no afflictions. In heaven, there will be no infirmities that stick with us. And God's reward of salvation comes with everlasting joy. I don't know about you all, but I'll be honest with you. This statement by itself, it is enough for me to see that God's reward, it is worth living for. The fact that there will be no suffering in the heavenly kingdom. The fact that there will be no afflictions for, for you and me to go through in the heavenly kingdom. The fact that there will be no pain. The fact that there will be no death in heaven. There will be no regrets. There will be no, man, if I only did this in heaven. If I only lived that way, there will be none of that. Heaven will be of peace, of eternal joy. And I say to you again, for me, that is worth living for. I can suffer for a little bit in this world if for all of eternity I have that joy. I don't know about the rest of you. That's for me. In our heavenly home, we are going to rejoice. We are going to be praising God. We're going to praise God along with those saints of the Old Testament. We're going to be praising God with those tribulation saints that will come during the great tribulation, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today. Scripture tells us that we are even going to be rejoicing with the heavenly host as well. Could you, could you just imagine that? The angels, the heavenly host, they're going to be rejoicing and we are going to be with them. Tell me you don't think that that is worth living for. As shown to us in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, the 12th and the 13th verse, the voice of many will sing a new song. We'll sing worthy is the lamb. We'll sing blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever we will sing. Mm -hmm. See, you and I, we are going to be rejoicing. We're going to be celebrating in New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We are going to be rejoicing. We're going to be celebrating in our heavenly home. In our eternal dwelling place, to all of us who overcome, we are going to not only rejoice, but we're going to be having a feast. You and I, we are going to feast on God's great joy. You and I, we are going to feast on his righteousness. Scripture tells us there in the second chapter of the book of Revelation and the seventh verse, that to all of us who overcome sin and the world, the Lord has promised to give to us to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Again, I will be honest with you when I say I cannot understand how somebody could look at the reward of God and dismiss it for this old polluted and corrupt world. This world where we go around stealing from one another. Mm -hmm. This world where we go around killing each other. Mm -hmm. This world where we go around persecuting each other. I, I cannot wrap my head around the thought of dismissing eternal joy and eternal peace for this wrathful and this world of hatred. I just can't wrap my head around it all for a few George Washingtons. I just can't make it make sense. I much rather wander down the road of heaven than go down the road in this world. See, in all this beauty, this beauty of God's reward of salvation, 
we will be dwelling and not have to worry about one single thing. We will dwell without having any worries. We won't have to worry about anything popping up out of the blue to ruin our happiness. That's what happens in the world. One moment we're happy and the next moment we know how things go. We don't have to worry about that happening in our heavenly home. Our joy of salvation will not be stolen. It will not be robbed from us. In heaven, John, he saw the sincere believer being glorified by the Lord. And in the second chapter, in the 10th verse of Revelation, John, he saw us receive the crown of life, which again, nobody will be able to take away. Personally, I'd much rather live for that crown and not have to worry for one second about anything or anybody ruining my day. Well. That's what I desire to receive. Mm -hmm. I desire to receive the eternal over the temporary. Mm -hmm. What about you? Do you feel, do you believe that the eternal is worth living for over the temporary? Mm -hmm. John, after he had seen and heard all of these things, after he had recorded all of these things in the 22nd chapter of Revelation, the eighth verse, we're told that all he could do was fall down. All he could do was fall down and, and worship the angel that gave him a tour of our heavenly home. And the angel looked at him in the ninth verse and said, what are you doing? Get up from there. Don't be worshiping me. I'm just a fellow servant like you. Yet I have to ask, could you just imagine how overwhelmed in his soul, in his spirit, John was with joy at all that he has seen with his own eyes. He, he, he was so overwhelmed that all he could do was just drop down and worship. Because again, God is good. God's great joy it is worth living for. This is the joy and the hope that you and I, we should push to be living sincerely for, to experience for ourselves. Again, I can't understand how anybody would be so dismissive of this picture of God's great reward of salvation and joy. Yet the loud voice from heaven makes it clear that many will continue to dismiss his reward. We're told that in the eighth verse in the 21st chapter of Revelation, that the cowardly, the unbelieving, murderers and liars, they will have their part outside of heaven. They will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. See, all of those of wickedness, all of those of sin, they will be cast away by the Lord for all of eternity, for everlasting life, they will be cast into outer darkness, also known as the lake of fire, where they will suffer with their guilt, where they will suffer with their regrets because they could have had better if they only realized that eternal life with the Lord was worth living for. They will suffer with their shame, their guilt, their regret, because they will have realized that they missed out on the joy of salvation when it was given to them. When the Lord invited them to come in and they said, oh, Lord, I have my own business to tend to when they were too impatient to wait on the Lord, they will live with that in their minds. You and I today, I tell you that we should take John's overwhelmed joy, we should take it to heart. We, we should take that to heart today. We should take it to heart and we should live to feel it for ourselves. The joy that he had, we should let it flow within us. 
So again, we can experience for ourselves that joy. Because one day this world is going to pass away. And all that will be left is everlasting life. Do you want everlasting life of suffering with your guilt and your regret? Or do you want everlasting life in joy, in salvation, worshiping and praising the Lord for again, how good he is. You see, that's what I want. Yeah, I want my mansion. My mansion, which has been built for me in glory. Ain't that what we sing? That is what I want. I want my mansion in heaven and I will live sincerely for it. I hope today that you will do the same, that you would join me in doing your very best to live according to God's word of love. Amen. 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 Amen.